Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yish Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 3rd of December. Farmers' protest over farm laws intensifies as more protesters converge on Delhi borders. PMLN leader Rana Salahullah warns of violent clash as Pakistan government tries to impede upcoming opposition rally. And Afghan government Taliban announced breakthrough deal in peace talks. And now for all the details. The number of protesting farmers swelled at Delhi border points on Thursday as police stepped up security after thousands blocked key gateways into the Indian capital for the eight day on the trot. Farmers are staying put at Delhi borders with Haryana and Uttar Pradesh states over various demands including the repeal of the three new farm laws that aim to deregulate India's enormous agriculture sector. Government ministers also held talks with farmer leaders on Thursday to try and break a deadlock over laws passed. Indian government ministers held talks with farmers' leaders on Thursday to try and break a deadlock over laws passed earlier this year, seeking to deregulate the agriculture sector that has ignited the country's biggest farm protest in years. Tens of thousands of farmers have camped out at the entrance to capital New Delhi in protest against the laws, seeking to rid the sector of antiquated procurement procedures and to allow farmers to sell the institutional buyers and big international retailers. More farmers from neighbouring states joined in the protest on Thursday. The farmers who form a powerful political constituency feared the laws passed in September could pave the way for the government to stop buying grains at guaranteed prices, leaving them at the mercy of private buyers. We are Hindustan, Punjab, Haryana, Hindustan, the people who are living in Kirsan, they are not going to be able to do it. انہوں کے حق میں ہم جو جڑے ساڑے سنگھ صاحب جاتے دار ہیں انہوں نے دیاں فوجان تے نار جڑی ہیں ساڑے نار پجاب دیاں ہور سنگتا جڑیاں ہوں دیاں ہوں وہ ساریاں بھی ہیران کا تکے پجاب تو ادھر نو آ رہی ہیں کچھ پہنچ گئی ہیں تے کچھ پیشے پہنچ رہے ہیں The protest posed a crucial test for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ability to reform India's vast agriculture sector. Farm groups say the government is trying to end a decades-old policy of providing them with an assured minimum price for producing staples such as wheat and rice. Indian Navy Chief Admiral Karambir Singh on Thursday said that the Navy was prepared to face the dual challenges from COVID-19 and China. He said that the Navy's activities are in close coordination with the Army and the Air Force in dealing with threats from China amid the border standoff in the Ladakh region. Indian Navy Chief Admiral Karambir Singh on Thursday said that the Navy was prepared to face the dual challenges from COVID-19 and China. Standing steadfast in these testing times, as he addressed a press conference on the eve of the Navy Day. Admiral Singh said the Navy's activities are in close coordination and synergy with the Indian Army and the Air Force in dealing with threats from China and tackle the situation if there is any infringement by Chinese vessels. He informed as of now three Chinese warships are in the Indian Ocean for anti-piracy patrols, but no infringement in India's maritime zone has happened so far. Fishing traffic, like China and research vessels, जो उनके डिप्लॉयमेंट्स हो रहे हैं पर अभी तक कोई हमारे जो मैरिटाइम जोन्स में ऐसा कोई इनका इन्फ्रिंजमेंट नहीं हुआ और हमारे पास एक स्टैंडर्ड ऑपरेटिंग प्रोसीजर है अगर कोई इन्फ्रिंजमेंट हो तो हम कैसे टैकल करें इस चीज़ को इंडिया एंड चाइना हैव बीन लॉक्ड इन अ बिटर बॉर्डर स्टैंड ऑफ इन दी नॉर्दर्न हिमालयन रीजन ऑफ लद्दाख सिंस अर्ली मे टेंशन फ्लेयर्ड अप इन जून वेन ट्वेंटी इंडियन सोल्जर्स फॉर किल्ड इन अयलेंट फेस ऑफ विथ चाइनीज ट्रूप्स मूविंग ऑन India's first secretary to the UN, Ashish Sharma, on Wednesday slammed Pakistan 
for violating the resolution on culture of peace by arbitrarily transferring the management of the historic Sikh shrine Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib to a non-Sikh body. He also condemned Pakistan for discriminating against its religious minorities, which is manifested in various forms. India on Wednesday slammed Pakistan at the United Nations for violating the resolution on culture of peace passed last year and arbitrarily transferring the management of the historic Sikh shrine Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in the country from a Sikh body to the administrative control of a non-Sikh body. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan-led government in November notified the control has been transferred from the Pakistan Sikh Gurdwara Management Committee, a body run by the minority Sikh community, to the administrative control of the Evacuee Trust Property Board, or ETBP, a non-Sikh body. India's first secretary at the UN condemned the move and said it deprives the minority Sikhs the right to manage the affairs of their holy shrine which is the final resting place of Sikhism's founder, Guru Nanak Dev Ji. This issue of Holy Kartarpur Sahib Gurdwara finds mention in that earlier resolution. That resolution stands violated by Pakistan. If Pakistan changes the current culture of hatred against religions in India and stop its support of cross-border terrorism against our people, we can attempt a genuine culture of peace in South Asia and beyond. The Indian diplomat called on the UN to take action while further condemning Pakistan for discriminating against its religious minorities, which is manifested in various forms, including targeted violence, abductions, curbs on practicing religion and forced conversion to Islam. In news from Pakistan, the Pakistan Democratic Movement and Alliance of 11 Opposition Parties has warned Prime Minister Imran Khan's government against creating hurdles in its Lahore's December 13 rally, saying such tactics may lead to violent clashes. Pakistan People's Party will host a meeting on December 7 in Lahore to finalize the arrangements ahead of the rally, which is being hosted by PMLN, both part of the alliance. Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Punjab Province President Rana Sanahullah on Wednesday warned Prime Minister Imran Khan's ruling Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf government against creating hurdles for the opposition alliance, the Pakistan Democratic Movement's rally in Lahore next week. After the opposition meeting, where arrangements for the December 13 rally was reviewed and strategies for the planned protest was devised, Rana Sanahullah said the government would be responsible if the situation turns violent. The rally is being hosted by Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, part of the Opposition Alliance. Prime Minister Khan has called the opposition callous for endangering the lives and livelihood of the people and said that they are at the root of the coronavirus surge. But the opposition has maintained that the real target is to squish the mass movement against the Khan government. Meanwhile, amid a rise in COVID-19 infections and deaths, Pakistan on Thursday reported almost 3,500 daily cases, its highest since July 2. With the new cases, the national tally has risen to 406,810. The National Command and Operations Centre decided to observe COVID-19 week to raise public awareness about the disease and the government has announced that free vaccination would start from second quarter of 2021. In news from Afghanistan, negotiators from both the Afghan government and the Taliban side have agreed on procedural rules for the peace negotiation talks in Doha. The agreement comes after months of talks in Doha which were backed by the United States while the two sides are still at war. The Afghan government and the Taliban representatives have informed they have reached a preliminary deal to press on with the peace talks, their first written agreement in 19 years of war. Nader Nadari, a member of the Afghan government's negotiating team in Doha, has said a meeting was held between the two intra-Afghan negotiation teams. In the meeting, a joint working committee was tasked to prepare the draft topics for the agenda, he informed. Taliban spokesman Mohammad Naeem also informed that the current talks between delegations from the two sides indicate that there is a will for peace among Afghans. The international community and the Afghan leaders have responded positively to the news. The agreement comes after months of talks in Doha, 
which were backed by the United States, while the two sides are still at war. Despite being ousted from power during the 2001 U.S. invasion, Taliban still have control over wide areas of Afghanistan. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal on Thursday reported over 237,500 cases of the coronavirus after 1,343 more people were diagnosed with the deadly disease. Authorities claim the country has been conducting thousands of real-time polymerase chain reaction tests leading to spike in the data. Nepal's COVID-19 cases reached 237,589 on Thursday after 1,343 more people were diagnosed with the coronavirus disease. The nationwide death toll has jumped to 1,551 with 13 new fatalities, the health ministry data showed. The Kathmandu Valley has again emerged as the most affected, with its three districts including Kathmandu, Lalitpur and Bhaktapur reporting over 700 new infection cases on Wednesday. This comes as Nepal continues to conduct thousands of real-time polymerase chain reaction tests across the country since January this year. Authorities across the Himalayan nation have been very strict in imposing coronavirus restrictions in order to curb the virus. Setting an example for general public, police in Tanahun district even arrested senior leader of opposition Nepali Congress party Ram Chandra Podale on Wednesday. Podale was arrested for flouting COVID-19 restrictions by inaugurating a local bridge, leading to crowd at one place. The senior leader was released later in the day. Moving on. Cyclone Burevi moved away from Sri Lanka and was expected to move towards India, southern Tamil Nadu and Kerala states on Thursday night or Friday morning till the last reports came in. Cyclone Burevi making its first landfall slammed into eastern parts of the island nation on Wednesday night, causing no major damage. Cyclone Burevi left Sri Lanka off the coast in Mannar on Thursday after slamming into eastern parts of the island nation. The cyclonic storm with a wind speed of 70 to 80 km per hour, gustling up into 90 km per hour, was likely to move west-northwestwards and its influence was expected to gradually reduce till the last reports came in. Not much harm was reported to life and property, but naval and fishing communities were still advised not to venture into the deep and shallow sea areas of the coast extended from Colombo to Trincumale via Mannar and Kankasa Nutharai until Friday morning. Meanwhile, amid sequel wind speeds, the India Meteorological Department issued red alert in India's Tamil Nadu and Kerala states after forecast of heavy to very heavy rainfall in the region due to emergence of Cyclone Burevi. The cyclonic storm was expected to make first contact with the Indian coast between Pamban and Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu sometime between Thursday night and Friday morning. According to Weather Office, Burevi was likely to weaken into a deep depression on entering Kerala. However, state capital Tiruvanthanampuram and six districts remained on alert. Pakistan's lonely elephant Kavan has started settling into his new life in a Cambodian sanctuary eating, throwing sand on himself and flipping tyres. Chur, who had for years campaigned for his relocation, was there to see him beginning to explore his new home and said his life is going to be the life of an elephant and not the life of a prisoner. Pakistan's lonely elephant Kavan began his new life in a Cambodian wildlife sanctuary on Tuesday the result of years of campaigning for his relocation by American singer Shur. She was there to see him beginning to explore his new home. Carvin will gradually move from a quarantine enclosure to a larger one and then will eventually be able to explore an area spanning several hectares, according to a communications representative from the animal welfare organization Fort Paws. He'll be in that jungle and he'll be free and he'll have that, you know, he's, his life is going to be the life of an elephant and not the life of a prisoner. The 36-year-old elephant had spent most of his life at a zoo in Islamabad before being moved to the Kulen Pramtep Wildlife Sanctuary in Odhar Minche province to start a new life with some 600 other elephants. 
Kavan arrived in Cambodia from Pakistan by cargo plane on Monday. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.